Next reaction, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, along with Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz. Uh, Greg, we'll begin with you tonight. You've been following this story. You've been writing column after column. Uh, I want to go to the heart of this issue. I have been calling this the Joe Biden bribery and money laundering scandal allegations. Uh, does this take us one step closer tonight to, to Joe Biden, the president, and his involvement and his lying to the country? It does. His complicity, Sean. The evidence is mounting that Joe Biden, as you say, actively aided and abetted his son's schemes. He's been lying about it all along, and everybody knows that. I mean, he even lied about it yesterday. Uh, there, there's documents, testimony, White House logs, emails, text messages that prove that he talked by phone with Hunter's clients. He met personally with his son's overseas partners. He even attended their meetings that were closely guarded. Uh, you know, Joe Biden appears to be complicit in pushing the Biden brand, which was selling access to him, promises of influence. Devin Archer confirmed that Joe sent signals and operated as leverage for all of that money, millions of it. So it's obvious that Hunter was selling his dad to the world and the family was getting rich from it. Uh, it doesn't matter whether Joe pocketed a single penny of it. Under the bribery statute, it's still a crime if the money goes to any other person or entity other than the public office holder. And of course, as you pointed out earlier, bribery is an impeachable offense. And by the way, uh, there's no statute of limitations uh, on impeachment as there were in some of the charges that uh, David Weiss allowed to lapse intentionally. Professor Dershowitz, I, I doubt you would disagree with us on the issue of Joe Biden lying. It is now clear that he lied to the country when he said he never spoke to his son, brother, or anybody uh, for that matter, about their father, foreign business dealings. But it's bigger than that, because Hunter, in his own laptop, the very real laptop, not, not the fake laptop that the media claimed, uh, but he implicates his father. Half his income, he complained, goes to Pops. Uh, he had to pay for Pops' home repairs. That is backed up by emails we learned this week with Hunter I'm sorry, with Joe Biden himself directly with Eric Sherwin, who was the money person in the corporation. Uh, and then, of course, emails with Hunter and Eric Sherwin. Oh, what account should I pay Pops's home repair bill this time? Complaining, Hunter complaining about paying the home repair bills for 11 years. Uh, and then, of course, Tony Bobolinsky, the big guy, money set aside for this. Uh, none of this would be happening but for Joe Biden. But if you focus on one issue, uh, professor, this is what stands out in my mind. Hunter Biden said he had no experience in energy, oil, <laughs> gas, uh, coal, or Ukraine. Now, if you look at the Burisma example, he's paid millions. In that case, we know Joe Biden le leveraged a billion dollars. Then we have that WhatsApp message. This involves CEFC. That is the Chinese oil conglomerate. Again, no experience in energy. I'm sitting here with my father. We're wondering why you did not fulfill your commitment uh, between mm -hmm. uh, everybody. He, he will use everybody he knows and my ability to hold a grudge. You will regret not following through with what you agreed to. A few days later, five million dollars shows up in one of those bank accounts, uh, Professor, uh, what James Comer is calling shell corporations. Tell me, Professor, what does that look like to you? Well, first of all, let's remember who's responsible for all of this coming out. We have to give credit to Judge Noriega. Judge Noriega made sure that this was not all covered up by a deal that made no fence. Uh, since I predicted on your show and other shows that Judge Noriega would not accept the deal. I was trashed for it by many academics, by CNN, by many other media. But she did the right thing. She sent it back, and the result has been now much more information coming out to the American public. As I've said before, I hope that this results in the appointment of a real, real special counsel outside the Justice Department looking at the president of the United States. Because if it becomes just an impeachment concern, then half the country won't believe it. Half the country will. The same thing happened with Trump. But if there's a special counsel who's credible and who can get to the bottom of this and either clear 
President Biden or accuse President Biden, I think the American public will probably... Professor, let me stop you here, though. Because we, we have Merrick Garland, by the way, contradicted by David Weiss, and David Weiss contradicted by Merrick Garland uh, by the whistleblower testimony. Right. Originally, we know that Mr. Weiss planned on bringing no charges. That evolved into that sweetheart deal with no time spent in jail. That fell apart in front of the, that judge that you rightly praise, uh, who said to the uh, prosecutors, you've never seen a deal like this before. OK, the pros prosecutors had to admit, no, they never did. OK, now we're back at the drawing board. But Merrick Garland then appoints the guy that allowed the statute of limitations on the very important tax years of the Burisma money to expire. Now, why would he why would he appoint that individual who also contradicted what he himself, Merrick Garland, said? Merrick Garland said he had given the authority to Mr. Weiss to press charges in other jurisdictions. Well, according to the whistleblowers who took contemporaneous notes, they said David Weiss said just the opposite. So why would he be appointed unless somehow they're looking to protect the Bidens? Well, that's why we need to have a special prosecutor who's above reproach. My suggestion has been that a group of very distinguished people recommend five people to Garland and tell him to pick from those five people. Nobody from inside the Justice Department, nobody who's involved in politics, people of the stature of Archibald Cox, who was the special prosecutor appointed in the Nixon case. Everybody believed that. What we need to do is restore credibility to our criminal justice system not make our criminal justice system into a All weaponized right, let me crush partisan... you though can you explain yeah. professor you're you're so you're such a smart man and you're an honest man can you explain to this country tonight how it's possible that somebody that is admittedly addicted to drugs and alcohol, somebody that has no experience, is making millions of dollars from all of these these countries and even our top number one geopolitical foe um, why would they be paying him that kind of money if he has no experience? Does that make any sense to you, uh, of Professor? It makes, because it doesn't well, make sense to me. Oh, it makes complete sense. They wanted access to the president. It's called the American system of lobbying. You pay people to give you access. There's no doubt that he was not qualified to have any of these positions. Okay, There's no look, doubt. But let's look at it legally. Is, is, oh. Are they then paying for influence? And is that a crime, Professor? Well, they're paying for influence. That's clear. It's a crime for the person paying for the influence. Whether it's a crime for the person who was to be influenced, that's something that has to okay, be looked into. Okay, then let me press right? you further. When Joe Biden went against Obama policy on the billion in loan guarantees, and he leveraged it mm -hmm. to get the prosecutor investigating Burisma fired in six hours after he had spoken with those executives five days earlier with his son when they were in Dubai together, uh, and in fact, son of a B, he got that guy fired. My question to you is, did he take an official action as vice president and that resulted in a financial gain for his own son? And if he did, what it's would you call that? Greg Jarrett, I think, called it bribery. If I'm wrong, Greg, well, correct me. Remember, it's beyond the statute of limitations. Now, you don't have a statute of limitations in impeachment, but can you impeach a president who committed an impeachable offense while vice president? That's an interesting issue. What do you think, Greg Jarrett? Well, look, it's Burisma, as you have explained, is Exhibit A in bribery, 18 U.S.C. 201, and also under the impeachment clause in the Constitution. But there's far more than that. Investigators have tracked at least 24 million from Beijing sent to Hunter, then funneled through this labyrinth of shell companies and eventually to his family members. That figure is actually a fraction of the total cash haul, factor in millions from China, millions from Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Romania, half a dozen other countries over which Joe Biden exerted influence, you're probably closer to $50 million banked by the Bidens in these suspected influence peddling schemes. I, I think, frankly, you know, the committee has only uh, spent a few months uncovering mountains of evidence. But it may just be the tip of the iceberg. Uh, this may be the largest bribery influence peddling scandal in American political history and shameful.
Do you agree with that, Professor? If the evidence supports what the investigations have shown by Greg, by John Solomon, and, and by you, there is a smoking gun here, and that's why we need a special prosecutor to look into this, because this may be a very, very significant matter, but we have to get the evidence. It can't be based just on allegations, and it can't be based on partisan investigations. The American public deserves to have a person of great integrity and reputation look into these matters. I'm you know, saying Judge based Nuri on, but what we opening, know now, you admit this is influence yeah. peddling. Based on what we know, the facts we know, the words of Joe Biden, the words of Hunter Biden. I have no experience. Uh, son yeah. of a B, they fired him. Uh, we know what the policy was. We know when the phone calls took place. Uh, pretty damning, if you ask me, Professor, but I do appreciate you being with us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.